spring in the south wouldn't be complete without iconic wisteria flowers. They're beautiful and they're everywhere, but they don't belong here. Each year those blooms are on the newest growth. So it's climbing to get to the light and it can actually break the trees that it climbs under its weight and it twines its way into little cracks and crevices. There are several wisteria species, but the Japanese and Chinese species are out competing our native plants. How can a plant from the other side of the world find its way into our forest and be so prolific? A lot of times they're brought over for characteristics like the beautiful flowers. After just two or three weeks of blooming, this plant is done for the season. And now each and every one of these flowers is going to have a giant seed pod like this, filled with tasty seeds that the birds are going to eat and bring into our forests. It's not an ideal plant. There are better plants. Um, the American wisteria is much more in bounds. Japanese and Chinese wisteria bloom before leafing out for the year, but our American wisteria blooms after leafing out. That's how you can tell them apart. American wisteria doesn't grow as tall as non-native varieties, and American wisteria will rebloom sporadically throughout the summer. Another benefit? Our native plants have so many insects that feed on them that in turn are a food source for our songbirds and other animals. Now you're a wisteria whiz. I'm meteorologist Alex Calamia.